I should check my email. My parents must have. As I opened the lab door, I immediately froze. And the music abruptly changed. Augustan ranted angrily at Rosemarie, who gestured to a chipped stone with tiny flakes surrounding it. Permission to touch or manipulate any. This is for my research! The two paused and turned to me, and I cowered at their annoyed stares. As I shrunk back, Augustan approached and slammed the lab door shut. Not wanting to loiter, I whirled around and collided into someone. Now I was awkwardly sandwiched between that person and the door. Sorry about that. I glanced up, instantly recognizing Kyler's tall frame. Feels like it's been forever since I've seen Kyler, because I've hardly been in the cave. He appeared baffled and gazed at the door. Muffled voices still argued behind it. He took a few steps back to allow more space between us. Did something happen? From what I could gather, Augustan is mad at Rosemarie over something. Why, were you planning to enter the lab too? Yes, I was planning to ask a few questions. But it's probably not the best time now. Yourself. I wanted to check my email. My laptop is in there, but I don't think they'd appreciate it if I slipped into Nabbit. You could try using the computer upstairs. That old thing? Well, it's worth a shot. It was then I heard the faint clicking of a keyboard upstairs. I doubted Hendrik would remain in the lab with that sort of tension going on. Sure enough, halfway up the stairs I spotted his auburn ponytail. I glanced back down at Kyler. Maybe it's something you can ask Hendrik? I don't like going to him. Kyler never acted this juvenile and it caught me off guard. I wondered if he'd mistranslated his words, but his body language suggested otherwise. If you're curious, I could ask Hendrik about the situation. Hesitantly, Kyler took a step forward, and I cheered silently. I doubted Kyler would mention his original question to Hendrik, but maybe engaging him in conversation would loosen up whatever friction the two had with each other. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta fix this. I tripped upstairs energetically and gave Hendrik a wave. Hey, working up here now? Sort of had to. Couldn't concentrate with the noise downstairs. So... What happened? My email could wait, and it would inconvenience Hendrik to ask for his computer anyway. What's going on downstairs? It sounded as if they were upset over something. Ah, that. It's nothing new here, although I wish it happened less often. Kyler folded his arms wearily, and the two exchanged knowing glances that I couldn't understand. What's the argument about this time? Despite my advice, Rosemary insisted on gluing flakes to a lithic core found in the A3 layers since we've been able to uncover debitage belonging to that core. That doesn't seem so bad. That's how you gain knowledge about napping, right? Yes, but she ended up using the wrong glue. I'm not going to enjoy dismantling it. Honestly, I don't know why you let her continue to work here. She's nothing but trouble. What kind of attitude is that? Despite her disagreement, she is excellent at her job. If anything, her insight has been valuable. Affronted, Hendrix stood up from his chair, shooting Kyler an aggravated glare. Kyler flinched slightly, but his eyes narrowed again. I tensed up, wondering if I should say something to appease them, or leave before it got too heated. I only say that because I'm thinking of the excavation team's best interests. You're getting ahead of yourself here. You're acting like you're one of us already. Just because you're in my uncle's good graces doesn't mean we'll hire you once you graduate. And we're not intending to hire anyone soon. Especially not an inexperienced person fresh out of university, with only a few months of field work under his belt. Kyler lowered his arms, his eyes looking both resentful and distraught as if the notion had never occurred to him. Recovering, he clenched a fist, his voice rigid with determination. I've excavated here longer than most people. I've certainly spent more time in the cave than you. I'm highly qualified. There's much more than just digging diligently in the same old square. Oh, for... I didn't care if I was an outsider. Guys, guys, quit it! I firmly stood between them before their voices escalated even louder than the commotion downstairs. There's already one dispute. Can we not have another? I'm leaving. I can't do this. I'm not gonna do this, because that's Kyler. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave. I'm, I'm not leaving. Like, Hendrick's our teacher. And we can't be playing teacher's pet. Even if I didn't want to hurt poor Kyler's feelings. So I'm going to take both their sides and then stick around and talk to Hendrik afterwards. 
You both are on the same side, essentially, wanting the excavation here to run smoothly. I'm glad to see such devotion, but this isn't helping. I know you're concerned, but ease off on the hostility. Hendrik and Kyler exchanged intense looks, but both subsided. Hendrik relaxed, more willing to reconcile, while Kyler begrudgingly averted his eyes. She's right. I don't agree on some things, but I definitely could have handled this better. My apologies, Kyler. No, I did say something rather undiplomatic. Rosemary is an important member of the team. Even Augustan can see that. <sighs> he really hates agreeing with Hendrik unless Augustan has the same viewpoint. <laughs> I apologize for my behavior. With a conclusive nod, Kyler wordlessly excused himself and descended the stairs. I wavered between them indecisively. Ugh, what to do? Should I stay with Hendrik or catch up to Kyler? I am going to stay with Hendrik. I decided to remain with Hendrik, who already sat down to lose himself in his work. Um, why is it that you two don't get along? It's not even worth bringing up. Just some petty grudge he has against me. Therefore, he sees me as a rival. After a few impatient jabs against the keyboard, he sighed exhaustedly and mustered up an apologetic smile. Oh, maybe we can talk about it another time. I'm sorry. The whole argument put me in a bad mood, and I don't want to act discourteous around you. <laughs> we both have our own ideas for Colin Cave. Hopefully we'll reach some middle ground, if he continues to stick around every summer. Sorry you had to see the friction between us. We're like a transformed plate boundary. Maybe you'll stop wearing each other down. More like eroding my patience. Despite the jab, we both chuckled lightly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later, then. See you, Melissa. I excused myself and hopped down the steps, urgently needing some fresh air to clear my head. Oh dear, we gotta fix the rift between these boys. So impatient, both of them. Come to an understanding. Ah, oh, finally, in the cave, for a change. Ugh, these clay sediments are a pain. I grumbled inwardly as I wiped the sticky dirt off yet again. I was on my knees, trying to finish the last 25 centimeters. I did uncover tiny bones, but rationalized they weren't worth sketching in the grid. Hey, you're in the cave too today. Excellent. There was a sound of scraping metal, and I turned to see Hendrik climbing down the ladder behind me. What a rare sight! You're hardly in the cave, Hendrik. I know. As a geologist, you'd think it'd be the opposite, but here I am now. He surveyed my square, and I started to get self-conscious, wondering if I was doing something wrong. I hope you don't mind the tight squeeze. He knelt down next to me, and I hastily moved to my haunches, offering him my knee pad. He shook his head. Don't worry about it. I'll just be here for a few minutes. I wanted to observe your digging techniques. After I made myself comfortable again, I leaned forward to start excavating. He watched, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. How am I doing? Hmm, is your wrist well? Any pains from repetition? Nope. Sherry gave me some pointers to avoid it. Great. Mind if I borrow your trowel for a second? Sure. I cleaned it, handed it over, and he grasped it nimbly. I've noticed your wrist is slightly angled, and you're simply scraping or trailing your trowel through the dirt. It's painfully slow. Isn't archaeology supposed to be painfully slow? <laughs> He held the trowel so it was parallel to the dirt. It is, but even you should be able to dig through a few centimeters a day. Align your trowel like so, then make a nice downward flick with the wrist. The blade of the tool effortlessly sliced through the clay much cleaner than before. Don't be afraid to make large cuts. This helps you avoid blurring the sediment lines, as it's neater and easier to distinguish. Admire. His movements were broad yet graceful. It was strange. Even with such a simple action, I could tell he was experienced. I watched in awe. I have to say something obvious here. You're good at this. I've been doing this for years, so I have a slight inkling on how to excavate. Also... He extended his arm upward, toward the middle of the square. The trowel smoothly grazed over the dirt until it bit into a slope. Your square isn't entirely vertical. If you're worried about digging too far inward, use a ruler to double-check. Thanks for the tip, Hendrik. Gein problem. If you need me again, I'll be happy to assist. Just don't start taking me for granted. <laughs> okay, that was cheesy, even for you. Hey, that pun is a classic. 
He returned the tool to me and stood up. Glancing in Kyler's direction, Hendrik rubbed the back of his head, mulling over how to approach him. Finally, he tapped Kyler on the shoulder. Kyler begrudgingly stared at him before activating his implant. We. Oui. Kyler's voice struggled to keep an even tone, while Hendrik's voice had a shaky cheerfulness to it. I was wondering if you needed any help or had any quest. I'm fine. I don't need your help. Kyla returned to his square, ignoring Hendrik, who sighed ruefully. <sighs> it's not the best time to ask, even if my curiosity is killing me. One day. I returned to my work while Hendrik climbed up the ladder, most likely to make his rounds with the other students. Staring at my trawl, I recalled Hendrik's movements and attempted to mimic them to the best of my ability. Slice cleanly, huh? I inspected the work Hendrik did and made similarly sized cuts into the soil. The clay was sticky and cumbersome, but it was not as bad when I had my trowel angled. The rest of the day was uneventful, but at least my progress was much better. I stood up and stretched. It was a good time to take a small break and jot down some notes in my journal. I'm gonna get some fresh air. You know, Kyla, you're gonna get hypoxia if you don't go outside every now and then. I'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> later. <laughs> don't eat me. <laughs> Poor Kyler. I feel like I've been neglecting him this time around, but it's not my fault. I'm hardly in the cave. Oh, I failed, but do I get the scene I thought I would? I think so. Whee! <laughs> my shoes slid down the slippery rocks on the pathway. Since it rained for the last few days, the road was damp, which added an element of danger. Or in my case, fun times. I did a graceful half turn and waited for DeAndre to catch up to me. Careful now, we don't need you flying off the edge here. I'm an accomplished dancer. Some slimy rocks won't trip me up. Oh hey, where does that lead? My attention swiftly zeroed in on a beaten path that went downward toward the roads and houses. No idea. Shall we take a detour? I remember the last time I took a detour and got lost, and the chain of events that happened because of it. Sure, why not? I definitely learned from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. However, the path did not lead far. It took us to a rectangular area in the forest, roughly 40 yards across. Some hay bundles were stacked in a pile. DeAndre and I exchanged confused glances. Why would there be hay in the middle of nowhere? It looks like it's been there for ages, too. Beats me. We could always ask Augustan or Hendrik. Maybe they know. Is it even worth bringing up? It's only abandoned fodder. Wouldn't hurt. Now let's head back before we get lost somehow. I highly doubt that. Hey, it already happened once to me. Rather not repeat. Once we returned to the museum, I poked my head into the indoor laboratory. Hendrik was carefully prying stone flakes off a car, occasionally adding some sort of solvent to a moist cloth. Hello, what can I do for you? DeAndre and I filed into the room while I curiously peered at the half-dismantled core. We stopped by to ask about some hay. Uh, hay? There's a stack of hay in the forest, off the cave path. Oh, that. What about it? Wondering why it's there? See, during tours or festivals, we use that area to throw javelins. We also set up some sort of target against the hay. Oh, sweet as. So where do you keep the weapons? Hall closet? <laughs> Second floor, actually. Would we even be allowed to use them? Of course. In fact, I can demonstrate right now. Really? Yes, we can squeeze some practice in before it gets dark. If you want to, that is. Hi, Min. You're joining us, right, Melissa? Absolutely. Totally. It sounds like fun. You two can run ahead. I need to clean this up and grab the gear. Woo! It didn't take long, and soon Hendrik appeared carrying a javelin and a smaller stick with a rock attached to it. We stood roughly 20 yards from the pile of hay. Hendrik launched into an explanation. I'm guessing neither of you have used an atlatl before. We shook our heads as he readied the device. He held the spear tightly and angled his body toward the hay. An atlatl refers to the smaller rod here. With this, I'll be able to increase my velocity and the strength of the spear throw using leverage. He tilted the atlatl, letting the javelin settle into the dimpled end. It balanced carefully over his shoulder as his left fingers pinched the sides. He took a wide lunge then threw the javelin with fluid force. It penetrated the hay and I applauded energetically. Whoa! Nice one! Good to know I haven't gotten rusty. 
DeAndre retrieved the spear and accepted the atlatl from Hendrik. I watched Hendrik give pointers, repeating his motions, while DeAndre followed ineptly. <laughs> he attempted one throw, but it only went a few feet and clattered to the ground harmlessly. This is harder than it looks. It takes practice. Put your fingers to the side of the spear like you're holding a pencil. I notice you grasp the top. You can't release it like that. After fumbling a few times, DeAndre held the weapon over his shoulder and threw it with all his might. This time the javelin sailed clear over the hay. That's a wonderful thing about Atlatls. The leverage makes it so you don't have to apply that much force to achieve great distance. You can ease off on the strength, DeAndre. You're up, Melissa. Oh no. I grabbed the Atlatl while DeAndre went off to hunt for the missing spear. <laughs> Sounds like a mystery novel. The hunt for the missing spear. Since you're right-handed, put your left foot forward, angle your body like this, and keep the shaft close to your ear. DeAndre handed me the javelin once he returned. I already struggled to keep it inserted in the cup of the atlatl. Curse these small sausage fingers of mine. <laughs> DeAndre smirked teasingly as they stepped back to give me room. Hey, I got tiny fingers! Careful there, I don't want to accidentally be skewered. Just be wary of what you say while I'm armed. It's all in the wrist, Melissa. Make sure you flick down when you release it. Recalling Hendrix's advice, I raised my arm and carefully balanced myself as I focus on the target. I should. <laughs> Aim straight and true, or use all your strength. Well, I don't need to use all my strength. That was DeAndre's problem. Just aim straight and true, girl. I believe. With a smooth motion, I extended my arm forward and snapped my wrist downward as I followed through. The javelin launched out of the thrower and sort of skidded on the ground a few feet from the hay. Aww. Despite that, Hendrik beamed happily while DeAndre ran off to fetch the javelin like an eager puppy. <laughs> Not bad. You've got a good eye. Now you should focus on your form. The three of us alternated, taking turns to try and hit the hay bundle. Hendrik remained relatively consistent, while DeAndre and I were still trying to figure out the motions. After a loud, Hyo! DeAndre hurled the javelin and it bounced off a tree. If you were hunters, I'd starve to death. You'd starve anyway, since you don't eat meat. <laughs> True. Then Hendrik wouldn't mind that I completely took down a tree. We'll have some roasted bark tonight. Good thing trees aren't good at dodging. What's all this? No! I thought it'd be August Dawn. It's Chantel! What's all this? <laughs> Our laughter died as someone emerged from the pathway. Chantel eyed us curiously before she studied the javelin that DeAndre picked up. We're all practicing how to use an atlatl. Would you like to try? Sure! How does this work, anyway? DeAndre handed her the items and we gave Chantel some room. Hendrik demonstrated first to show her how to hold them. This is awesome! I'm glad Chantel is joining us. Chantel copied him, her hand hovering over her ear, but then continued until it was high above her head. Like this? Lower. You need the shaft closer to your ear. Are you... Are you... Are you making a move on my... On my guy? Chantel, back away now. <laughs> Not cool, girl. Uh-huh. The atlatl thrower practically rested on her shoulder while she expectantly waited for Hendrik to correct her. <laughs> I realized she was hoping for a more hands-on approach, but Hendrik was oblivious to her intentions and continued to gently critique her stance. A smidgen higher, Chantel. Here, Hendrik means like this. Oh, DeAndre and Chantel are getting it on today, <laughs> apparently. Oh... Uh, Good grief. So weird. DeAndre stood slightly behind Chantel and manipulated her right arm until it held the weapon over her shoulder. Now try it. Chantel was surprised that DeAndre came to her aid, but she mustered up a grateful smile and nodded. Right. As the two continued talking, Hendrik positioned himself beside, beside me. Did you make the atlatl? Me? Oh no, it's all Rosemary's arts and crafts. Uh, don't tell her I call it her hobby that, or I'll be her next atlatl target. <laughs> Promise. So Rosemary made it. Was it something Neanderthals used? That's a bit of a hot topic right now. Currently the evidence points to no, but nothing has been conclusive yet. 
The earliest Atlatl found came from the Solutorean industry, dated, if my memory doesn't fail me, 17,500 years before the present. However, we also study early modern humans here. We discovered an occupied site in the cave, 40,000 years old in fact. Rosemary specializes in Mysterian, but she occasionally dabbles in more recent technology. Mysterian? Ah, the tool industry that occurred between 300,000 and 30,000 years ago. Often associated with Neanderthals. The era you're digging in. We looked up in time to see Chantel launch the javelin fut futilely. <laughs> Aw, I threw it, but it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> you did the same thing I did. Here, your fingers were gripping the top when... After a few more turns, it was getting darker, and Hendrik decided to call it quits before it got dangerous. Besides, you all must be hungry. Go eat. I walked with Hendrik while Chantel happily chatted with DeAndre. <laughs> I feel like this is Pride and Prejudice. Was it... I think it was Jane and Mr. Bingley were walking ahead and Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy were walking behind. <laughs> yes, this is what it reminds me of. What did you think of the little demonstration? I enjoyed it. It's not every day I get to throw spears. I see why Rosemarie recreates the technology. You learn a lot by experiencing it yourself. You did well for your first time, too. Thanks to your pointers. I wonder how skilled Rosemarie is at throwing spears. Hmm. Let's make sure we're on her good side. <laughs> so that she's not throwing it at us. Phew. Good, we succeeded at the internet. Woohoo! Good. And dance? Oh, uh, no such luck there. Oh well. Can't have everything. Woo! Yep, still gonna make them rock puns every day. Okay, so this is week four. Let's see what we got. Lab. 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 Lab this week. I am... I just want to make sure. I don't think Hendrik ever does. I'm wondering if I should, though. <laughs> lab! Okay, all the lab this week. Well, we haven't been yelled at yet, so... Also, our... Um, diamond isn't... Like, nothing is growing inside of it. I just realized. Is it because we're only rational? So far? It, has, it has, just has nowhere to go. <laughs> hmm. All the questions. Well, we're almost maxed out our rationality. This bone looks fragile at the ends. I'll just wipe the middle, then. Once I was done, I wrote down his identification, then placed it into the cup next to me. Looks like it was settling in the lab just fine. Thanks. At least bones aren't falling apart in my hands. They do require that delicate touch. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Did Hendrik or Augustan tell you about the history of Carlin Cave? Augustan did. I didn't know its discovery was so interesting. Interesting? It seemed like a standard procedure to me. Wait, then a lot of caves here were discovered by kids? Kids? Augustan said kids found the cave after they watched a movie about an exploring archaeologist. He told you that! <laughs> nine, nine! Kanan was discovered by cavers during a survey back in the 80s. There's a lot of caves in this region, and they were mapping them out. Looks like you fell for one of his jokes. Seems so. Thanks for clearing it up. No problem. Augustan tends to spin things once in a while. Don't take him too seriously. Unless it's about microstratigraphy. Right. And don't put the wrong glue on things, <laughs> if you don't want to get yelled at. Or find burnt flint in your, uh, wet screen. After lunch, I entered the laboratory to ask questions as usual. Rosemary stood before the center table with wooden boxes full of various stone tools and flakes. What's up? Rosemary blinked out of her trance and turned to me. I wonder why that section was different. Flashing a smile, she made a sweeping movement with her arm to direct my attention. Oh, trying to refit this collection. They're all pieces from the same layer, and I'm trying to connect them. That sounds difficult. There's easily hundreds right here. Think of it as getting a box of pieces from different jigsaw puzzles. They don't tell you how many pieces are missing, or how many puzzles they're from. 
no pictures to help, either. It's a huge accomplishment, even to pair up one. And now I'm forbidden to use glue. Bah! Yeah, I did hear a snippet of it. It seems both Augustan and Hendrik don't like it when the collections get fiddled with. Agitated, she slammed both hands on the table. They disapprove of removing anything from their precious order. Everything must remain in its properly recorded place and stored away. They pay more attention to context and the microstratigraphy than actively putting the pieces together. I feel like I'm the only one who wants to learn about the Neanderthals. Oh, they're so... so... boneheaded. No more like rock-headed. Forgive me for resorting to one of Hendrick's puns. Anyway, I'm the one who studies all of the technology. I even craft my own tools and weapons here to demonstrate. If you'd like, feel free to help me. Seeing it up close is fascinating. Just watch yourself. Many of the blades and edges are all still sharp like new. Sure. I pulled up a chair focusing on the nearest pieces. So these are all from Colin Cave? Of course. Every single one documented and accounted for. If a flint was found in the wet screening, though, it'll be missing some coordinates. The variety was stunning, from small flaked pieces to others that resembled axes or thin knives. I picked up one and brought it to her attention. How were they able to accomplish this, exactly? Sherry did lecture to me about it, but... It was mostly sketched diagrams of the final product and not the process. It depends on what they were planning to do with it. For example, make a raclaw, axe, points. The one you're holding is a raclaw, also called a scraper. You can see it was beautifully retouched by pressure flaking at its edge here. They'd use a burin. Uh, think of it like a chisel with a pointed end, and apply force until it snapped a flake off. Good for finer details and to resharpen tools. Neanderthals were clever. They knew how to get long use out of their tools, and they had more control than the previous stone tool industries. And this one? I picked it up. The stone had an odd bulb near the end, followed by ripples along its surfaces. It reminded me of a shell. That's a conchoidal flake. It could be retouched into a tool if needed. It was easier to carry lightweight flakes than large intact rocks. This was done by percussion flaking. Basically, they used a hammerstone to strike it at a precise angle to break flakes off, causing this rippling pattern. We placed the objects down and Rosemary tapped one of the bigger stones in the center of the box. This scarred thing in the middle is a quartzite core. Quartzite is extremely hard to nap, but if material was limited, they would use it. Now I need to find the tertiary flakes to fit to it. Tertiary? Flakes from the interior part of the rock. Think of the core as the yolk of an egg. The tertiary flakes as the white part, and the outer flakes, called primary and secondary, as pieces of the shell. I'm following how the Neanderthals napped the tools in reverse, step by step. I know the terminology can be a little... overwhelming. Right now, it's more important to be able to identify them when you're digging. This quartzite is actually from an old Mouse River deposit a few kilometers from here. Hendrik and I published a few papers on material sources. Higher quality material like flint and shirt would be carried for even longer distances. Dear me, I'm blathering on like some cartoon owl from a kid's show. If you'd like, I can show you some of the stuff Hendrik and I published together. It'll give you more insight regarding Kalen's history. Really? I'd love to see it if you could email or print it off. I was awed that they had published works, but now that I thought about it, they probably published updates or findings related to Kalen Cave. It sounds like you and Hendrik have worked a lot together. We attended the same university, and we went to similar classes. Obviously published some papers together, too. Um... I need to know. I hesitated, but decided to be frank about it. It's been nagging at the back of my mind for a while. Are you and Hendrik... a couple? Um... What? Where did you get that idea? <laughs> nine, nine, nine! And don't get me wrong, I love and adore Hendrik, but as a friend, I'm not attracted to men in that way either. Anyway, about the papers. I'll talk to Hendrik about it since I know he'll have them on hand or in digital format. Why is my name being mentioned? Oh, Hen, speak of the devil. 
Melissa and I were discussing sharing our published works with her. Oh, not those. They're all badly worded gibberish with convoluted sentences in an attempt to sound mastery smart. You're over-exaggerating. And they're uh, in French. Some are published in English. You know, I don't have to look at them if you don't want me to. I'm satisfied with my recent work, so I don't mind sharing those with you. His first published work could be boiled down to, gee, these 60 million year old mountains sure haven't changed much in 60 million years. I had to pick something, and it was still time consuming compiling all that data, miss. Gee, these Neanderthals prefer to use local napping material. She patted then, ahem, to change the subject. I'll gather the newest articles. The ones written by Rosemary and me cover locations of material used for napping, while the ones I've collaborated collaborated on with my uncle explain the stratigraphy of Calen. Sounds good. It'll give me something to read over the weekend. Hendrik glanced over at the collection on the table. I'm guessing Rosemarie finally gave you one of her spiels. I hope it made up for missing out on the presentation earlier. True. Augustan had decided it was easier to explain stone tools himself since there was only one English-speaking student present. Yep, it was pretty interesting. Must have been, since everyone left ten minutes ago. Sherry was looking for you. What? I glance at the wall clock. Yeep, thanks for the reminder. Later, Melissa. And thanks again for the talk, Rosemary. Awesome lady. And we're not moving in on her territory, so... Good to know. Phew. Oh, but we're failing.